thing. Yes. So thank you so much for coming on and talking with me. Um, I really just wanted to get your, your feedback on the experience that you had working with the wing girl method with myself, with the programs that we have. I, I just want to hear from you who you are, what was going on and yeah, some, some of the results that you've seen so far. Well, my testimonial is so extreme that it's going to sound like an exaggeration, but it is what I've experienced through this process. And I was born with cerebral palsy, which um, essentially means being born early and having uh, spastic muscles and being unable to walk and using a wheelchair. And contrary to what a lot of people may believe, that didn't affect me as such in many, many areas of my life nor has it made me be an unhappy person because of it. Uh, in fact, it's a reality that I'm used to and that I thrive on, but when it came to the subject of dating, that's where a lot of fear came up at a very early age. And that was because one day my mother, wanting for me to exercise harder and hoping that I would walk said, you know, and I was a very, um, happy kid. I was very much into studying, being with my friends, and I wasn't really even into the dream of walking because for me, the, it was a natural thing to be in a wheelchair. But uh, my mother, to get me to exercise harder, said, uh, you know, if you don't walk, it may be harder for you to get a girlfriend. She knew I was into girls at a very early age, yeah. and she's really a beautiful mother person, very very loving, but that one sentence um, created this huge wave of, of panic in me to the point where I was having severe insomnia and anxiety almost every single night. And I wasn't really that open about how uh, severe it was. And I really did try all forms of therapy to treat it from very alternative methods to more of a traditional psychoanalysis road and I, and I didn't get that many results from it and the reason was that it was all about trying to um, kind of dig into my fear or look at it in a more rational way or try and, and find something in my unconscious but nobody was addressing the actual problem that I was having which is how do I make uh, women that I'm attracted to get past the very real fears that may come up in yeah. terms of uh, my wheelchair. And no psychologist was really giving me an answer to that. And so all the anxiety symptoms were remaining. And that was, of course, um, affecting my ability to sleep and then my, my functioning during the day. And then my ability to work even while having such a joyful and exciting life. And so I, I can't, uh, there's no way I can really express or, or get to the, the gratitude that I feel of having found the, the wing girl method. I mean, it, um, and so I said, well, maybe, maybe I'm just not considering the whole dating angle. And I began Googling different dating coaches. And what I found was a lot of male dating coaches out there that had a kind of what I found to be indirectly a macho sort of approach of, I, I don't know how exactly I would describe it, but um, it felt like, um, how, would, how would I describe the difference? I'm trying to articulate it. Um, well, it's just, I think most people who would watch this would understand because they've seen it too. It's just something that didn't resonate with you. It's much more about objectifying women, pumping yourself up as a man. Yeah, exactly. That pumping myself yeah. up as a man and, and uh, playing the seducer's game uh, instead of uh, entering into a genuine connection that then leads to seduction. And so when you came on answering some questions around sexual anxiety in your YouTube videos, I just thought, this is the person I want to work with. Um, and for my 
type of current budget in Mexico, I all, all of a sudden I wanted to get all of your programs and even making my own income, it wasn't something that was that, uh, you know, for, for my budget, it was a little on the pricey side. And I only mention it because um, I had to explain to my father, you know, this, this is not one more therapy, it's something different. And, and then he understood and I just went all out. And then I, and, um, and then I, when I started studying your programs, I thought, well, there's a lot of this stuff that I already know. So what am I really doing wrong? And that's when I felt like I needed more of your email coaching. Yeah. And what I, what I discovered through that is that, um, often what happens with me is that the fear of rejection comes up and to be able to send you an email in that moment and get get very concrete feedback of what is what is going on really really and what concretely i can do which isn't the same as let's analyze your feeling it's it's more of a direct line of how to bring about an action that you may desire that's how i've experienced it and so uh that in itself started calming my fear down and i always assume that the problem was that I was too obvious with, um, with my sexual desire, with my love. And maybe in some ways that was part of the problem that I was facing, but the big thing that turned things around for me was to realize that I was afraid of initiating a more physical type of contact. Mm -hmm. I was afraid of being sexual I was always t talking about it or around it instead of really being it and feeling it in the moment because my fear of rejection was so strong and so when I started to touch a, a woman's shoulder very gently and I realized that that was okay it uh it totally turned around my life and then one person was attracted to me and then another one and now I am dating a very, very beautiful partner in all ways. And I just remember after a, few, a couple of months of working with you, I thought, let me just concentrate and put all of these techniques that I've been learning for two months into practice. And on the very first date that we had, that wasn't even an official date. It wasn't even through Tinder. It was just a friend saying, you know, let's uh, meet because we have some things in common to talk about. Yeah. And on that very first day, we were having incredible sex with each other. And um, well, what that's all the information with? anybody else needs. Yeah, exactly. We don't need to go into detail. <laughs> what? That's, that's fantastic. Like that makes me so happy, happy to hear. And I, I think uh, anybody who's watching this has experienced much of what you've experienced. It's not because you're in a wheelchair, because of, of whatever other reasons you think it may be. This is the things, the fears, the, the misbeliefs, the... Um, closed offness to being sexual, that is something that every single guy that I work with experiences. And, and that's what I help them work through, through my programs or through my email coaching. So I'm, I'm really glad that it resonated with you and that it had the results that I was hoping for, but the results that I knew would always be there. And that was, um, that was the other thing that I discovered is how easy it is to get into that trap of thinking you're the only one that experiences so-and-so and then how much it's we can all be mirrors for each other and exactly. that's very fulfilling and also um i was i was also scared to communicate more of my desires my fears my feeling with other women that i was attracted to because of the fear of coming across as too alpha too macho too pushy too needy but actually that was also part of what was stalling me from getting what I wanted in a relationship so it's been a huge gift to be able to talk about the issues that may come up in relation to my wheelchair or actually any part of ourselves that we're afraid of in a more open way in a, in a bolder way in a more playful way a really big moment for me was 
uh, one that you already know by our email exchange, but I'll tell the story again because I had so much fun with this, um, where there was this friend I was kind of hanging out with and there was flirtation and a certain romantic vibe. And I just thought, uh, I'm gonna just tell her that I feel attracted and what does she think? And she said the, you know, I think I see you as a friend phrase. And before that would have um, bummed me out so much, like that would have gotten me into a state of depression for like three days and blah, blah, blah. And uh, because of that feeling that it wasn't really saying no to me, it was like saying no to my wheelchair, that sensation that can, that can really haunt me. And instead of going into that sad space, I just said, well, it's fine if you don't see me as, as something more than a friend, but I just want you to know that I'm like wine and blue cheese. I'm, I'm an acquired taste and I'm not for everybody, but those that try me can't get enough. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and I felt so empowered and so joyful. And I knew that from here on out, rejection would never feel the same to me anymore. Yeah, I love when um, you said that to me because I was like, ah, oh, that was the perfect thing to say. That's, <laughs> that was perfection. But I want to clarify that there's this way of, um, downplaying sometimes uh, dating or, or sexual coaching as something that is just like very targeted to one's sexual life or one's dating life. And what I already suspected, but that I'm confirming is that actually when that area of life gets addressed, it has an impact on all areas of life. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm now able to work twice as faster. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to make more money. You know, it's, it's not just about getting focused on one area. It's about a, a more abundant attitude you know, towards life. And okay. so I just want to thank your tremendous kindness in this, your patience, your generosity, because you've gone way above and beyond the call of duty in this whole process. Yeah. Honestly, just hearing everything that you're saying makes it all worth it. So <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that we did this together. So yeah, so thank you for coming on and telling others about your experience. And I hope that I can have the same experience with them. Yes, I, and I hope they don't, I hope people don't hesitate. They just go for it and follow that hunch to try something beyond the parameters of therapy and analysis and getting stuck. Thank you so much. Thank you. I can't stop recording.